Russia's war losses in Ukraine have sharply increased, with Ukrainian troops killing 1,460 enemy soldiers over the past 24 hours. The latest figure brought Russia's total combat losses to 696,410 since the beginning of a full-scale war, according to the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. In a statement published on Telegram app on Friday, the General Staff also revealed Russia's losses in terms of military equipment. Thus, Ukrainian troops destroyed dozens of Russian equipment, including six more tanks as well as 20 armored combat vehicles during the hostilities in the past day alone. Overall, Ukrainian troops have destroyed 18,470 armored vehicles, 20,039 artillery systems, 369 planes, 329 helicopters, 18,088 operational tactical UAV and other military hardware and equipment during the full-fledged invasion by Kremlin in February 2022. Meanwhile, Russian sources reported today that Russian troops have captured Leonidovka, Novokrenka and Shakhtarsko villages in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk region. In addition, Russian troops have advanced and captured the settlements of Selodovo, Gornyak, Tsukarino, Leonidovka and Izmolovka in Donetsk region, according to Russian media reports. It should be noted that Russia has stepped up attacks in Donetsk region in recent days. There have been multiple reports about Russian forces advancing in this direction of the front line. Ukraine and Russia are engaged in preliminary negotiations to halt strikes on each other's energy infrastructure. However, Russian President Vladimir Putin is unlikely to agree to a deal as long as Ukrainian forces remain on Russian territory in the Kursk region, reports the Financial Times. Kyiv seeks to revive negotiations mediated by Qatar, which came closer to an agreement in August, but were derailed by Ukraine's incursion into Kursk, sources including senior officials reported. There's very early talks about potentially restarting something. There's now talks on the energy facilities, said a diplomat informed about the negotiations. According to the official, Moscow and Kyiv have already reduced the frequency of attacks on each other's energy infrastructure in recent weeks as part of an arrangement reached by their intelligence agencies. However, according to a former senior Kremlin official, Putin is unlikely to agree to a deal until Russian forces drive Ukrainian troops out of the Kursk region, where they still control about 600 square kilometers of territory. Meanwhile, Ukraine plans to continue striking targets in Russia, including oil refineries, to exert pressure on Russia during negotiations. The Financial Times reports that the Kursk operation caused Moscow to withdraw from the previous round of negotiations in August, when officials were beginning to plan an in-person meeting in Doha. Qatar began acting as a mediator in these talks in June, following a summit in Switzerland, to which Russia was not invited. Four Ukrainian officials told the Financial Times that last autumn, Kiev and Moscow reached a tacit agreement not to strike each other's energy facilities. As a result, Russia refrained from large-scale attacks on Ukrainian energy infrastructure that winter. This agreement was meant to pave the way for an official deal, the sources said. However, Kyiv resumed drone attacks on Russian oil facilities in February and March of this year, aiming to increase pressure on Moscow after the failed 2023 counter-offensive. Despite warnings from the White House to cease strikes, Kyiv continued its offensive and Moscow concluded that the tacit agreement had been breached, sources told journalists. Subsequently, Russia escalated the situation by launching volleys of long-range missiles targeting power plants across Ukraine, including the Tripilska Thermal Power Plant, located 40 kilometers from Kyiv, which was completely destroyed. According to the Financial Times, as part of the Ukrainian campaign that began in early 2024, at least nine of Russia's 32 largest oil refineries have been damaged. According to the latest survey from the Razumkov Center, the number of Ukrainians supporting peace negotiations with Russia has increased over the past year. However, they are still far from a majority. The office of the president has outlined the main condition for commencing negotiations with Russia, the withdrawal of hostile troops to their positions as of February the 24th, 2022.
Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov on Friday welcomed his North Korean counterpart Cho Sunhui at the Yaroslavsky railway station in Moscow, the ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said on social media. The ministers attended the unveiling ceremony of a memorial plaque on the occasion of North Korean leader Kim Il-sung's visit to the USSR in 1949. Lavrov and Cho Sunhui are expected to hold talks later on Friday, Zakharova said. Industrial enterprises of the fuel and energy complex of Bashkortostan were attacked by three Ukrainian drones, the head of the republic, Rady Kabarov, reported on his Telegram channel. According to him, the first drone fell on the territory of one of the enterprises, causing minimal damage, breaking the windows in the control room. Two other Ukrainian drones crashed in an industrial zone and did not cause any damage. Within the framework of the Anti-Terrorist Commission and Operational Headquarters, we have formed a combined defense system against possible similar attacks, including passive defense, surveillance, and destruction tools," Kabarov said. The incident appears to be just the second time since the start of the full-scale invasion that Ukrainian drones attacked facilities in Bashkortostan, which lies some 1,500 kilometers from the country's border. The Russian telegram channel VCHKOGPU reports that the target of the attack could have been the Sterly Tamak petrochemical plant. An emergency evacuation of workers from the Bashneftufaneftikim plant was also announced. The publication, Proofy, writes that one of the drones got entangled in the grating and cables, which prevented a direct strike on a large enterprise. The head of Bashkiria specified that no one was hurt as a result of the drone attack and the enterprises that were targeted by the attack continue to operate as usual. An investigative team from the Republican Investigative Department of the Investigative Committee of the Russian Federation, units of the Ministry of Emergency Situations and employees of operational services have left for the scene. According to Kabarov, the situation is under control. In May 2024, a Ukrainian drone attacked Gazprom Neftikim Salavat in Bashkiria, one of Russia's largest oil refineries. The strike caused smoke at the facility, but a fire was avoided and no one was hurt. The Republic's Emergencies Ministry later clarified that the building of the pumping station was damaged. 